Okay, this time I'd like to extend the previous exercise a little further. Uh, notice the pattern we have when we said y equals mx plus b. Forget the m and the b as specific letters. We have some number times x and we have some number that's a constant. Uh, so if I start with a constant and then I have an x term, and if I continue the pattern, well, what if I have an x squared term or an x cubed term, x to the third power, and so forth? Uh, let's see what that's going to do. So let's bring up some sliders and call the first one A and the next one B and the next one C. And this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down here and I'm going to say Y equals I'm going to say A and leave a space, remember, and X squared. And to put a squared what I have to do is put the little caret symbol which is right above your 6 on your keyboard, followed by the 2. So that's like an elevated 2, okay? And then plus B space X, all right, and then plus C. So what do I have are these three numbers, and I have a sequence of terms where the far right one is just a constant, the next one is an X term, and the next one is an X squared term. Each of these can have numbers associated with them. Okay, and there we have it. All right, now it's sort of interesting uh, to see how this varies, but there's another interesting thing which is to see how this relates to what we've done in the past. So let's put up another um, equation here. This time it'll be the same one as before, except I'm going to use the b and the c. The b was the coefficient of x and the C was the constant, so let's do that again. So I'm going to say Y equals B X plus C, all right? Uh, the, the use of M and B, um, we don't really need to even worry about that in these problems here. So this one is just uh, the same two uh, terms on the right, except it doesn't have the X squared term in it, okay? And there it is. So, we know what happens when we vary the C, or at least you should fig have figured that out by now with these other explorations. Look what happens when I change B, or the coefficient of X, and then let's see what happens when I change the coefficient of X squared. Okay? What I'd like you to do is to play with this one and see if you can uh, write at least a uh, description of what the equation is going to look like, uh, like when does it go up, when does it go down, and how the curve here relates to the line, how it relates to the point where it crosses the y-axis, and so forth. Okay? Uh, if you can describe that from your experiences here. And then, uh, beyond that, I'd like you to do another experiment like this, except go one step further. Um, instead of going for a constant and a linear term, that's just the x term, and a quadratic term, that's like the x squared term, add on another term. Uh, this would be an x cubed term. So you're going to need four variables and see how that works out. Okay? If you'd like to keep going, try five or six. It's not that hard. Just throw in an extra constant and you make your list of terms so that they are like stair steps, starting with constant x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, whatever, and see if you can see how these all relate to each other. This whole family of curves is called polynomials, and the linear case is just one of the lower members of the family, and then the quadratic case is another curve studied in Algebra 1, and then the rest of the family is left for later in your math curriculum, but um, those of you in Algebra 2 have probably at least seen um, third-degree equations and higher. Okay, have fun playing.